Hey guys, welcome back to another Pro Data Man Trains demo. This demo is going to be a continuation of the previous demo where we used test driven development to create the stack class and its, its empty method. Today we're going to continue along with that demo by fleshing out the rest of the tests. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Back here in Visual Studio, I'm going to go back to my stack test where you can see we've got our is empty method that we created in the previous demo. Now we are going to continue on by creating a test to see what happens if we push a value onto the stack. Is it empty still? So let's create that test. We're going to call this second test push check empty test. And because programmer's rule number one is less typing means less typos, we're just going to copy that previous test and we'll call it push check empty test. Now this time we expect that if we push something onto the stack with the stack.push method, you can't have a programming demo without at least one hello world, so we'll go ahead and push hello world onto the stack. And now we would expect if we push something onto the stack that the stack would not be empty. So when we push and then check if the stack is empty, we would expect that the result is oops, false. Now we can't yet run the test and see it fail because the push method does not yet exist. So we are going to generate the stack.push method. And then we should be able to run all of our tests and see this new test fail. Now we can see that of our two stack tests, the is empty test is passing and the push check empty test is failing, but it's failing simply because the method or operation is not implemented. So let's just jump over to our stack class and we can see where that push method is created. And we'll go ahead and use the stack.add method to add v, the parameter being passed into this method, to the stack. Now we should be able to run our tests and see our two tests pass. Okay, now we've got two passing tests. Let's continue writing our tests. Now, if I was actually typing this all out instead of using our friend copy and paste here, by now I'd probably be mildly annoyed with typing stack stack equals new stack for each one of these tests, right? Stack stack equals new stack, stack stack equals new stack, stack stack equals new stack. That's a lot of duplicate code. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to declare the stack variable at the class level. And then I'm going to create a new method called setup. And in this new method, I'm going to simply set that stack variable at the class level equal to a new instance of the stack class. Now, what I need to do now is make sure that this setup method runs before every one of my tests. And I can do that by adding the test initialize attribute to this method. So now, before each test, we'll initialize by running this line of code to create a new instance of the stack class in our class level stack variable. So now I should be able to delete all of this duplicate code in our new tests here. And I will go ahead and flesh out the push pop check empty test here as well. Push pop check empty test. And this time we'll do a 
string variable to catch the actual value that comes back when we do a stack.pop to pop the value off of our stack. Now this time, we're pushing a value and popping a value. We should probably have an empty stack after we pop the value off of the stack. Now in order to run this test and see it fail, we need to again use the code generation tools to generate just enough code that the compiler can compile and we can run our tests. And our test will fail because yet again, the method is not yet implemented. So we are going to now go to our stack class and implement that pop method. And we'll do that by getting the result from executing a stack index zero to string. And then we'll do a stack dot remove at to remove the item at index zero that we just retrieved. And then we'll return that result that we retrieved. And now we should be able to run our tests and see them all pass. Okay, next test. Before we do the next test, since we're refactoring and cleaning up duplicate code, um, we should probably make an effort to clean up this code smell here. Uh, it's a bad practice or bad code smell to pass literal strings to a method. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to create a string variable called expected. And I'm going to set that string variable equal to this hello world string here. And then instead of passing hello world to our push method, we're going to pass that expected value. Now if we do code analysis later on, we won't get a code smell warning for this passing a literal string to our method. We've now used a variable. Our code is cleaner. So now we can run our tests and they should all still pass. Cool. Now we'll use this code again to do uh, test number four, which is going to be a push pop and then check the results that we get back. So we're going to call this one push pop, uh, not check empty this time, but we're going to check the return. Pretty much the same code, except for this time, we don't need the Boolean check because we're not going to check and see if it's true. We're going to check and see if the values are equal. And the values that we're going to compare are if we got the expected value and if that equals the actual value. So if the actual value that was returned from the pop method is the same as the expected value that we pushed in with the push method. And now we should be able to run our tests and they should all still be passing. Now test number five would have been a multi push pop and validate the results test, but that would expose the logic error that we purposely snuck in here so that we can find it later on with our spec flow automated acceptance tests. Check out the next demo to see that. So we're gonna move on to test number six, which is to see what happens if we pop from an empty stack. So again, we're gonna reuse this code. Add extra space in there this time. And we are going to do a pop empty stack test. So no push, just pop empty stack. So no pushing items onto the stack. We're just going to try to pop a value off of the stack. And in this case, what we expect is that the value that we get back is null. Now, as I'm sure you can probably guess, that's not the case right now. If we try to pop a value from an index, or rather from a stack that has nothing in it, we're going to get an error. 
an index out of range exception, to be specific. So our test is failing because the uh, argument or index is out of the expected range. So we're trying to access an item at index zero when there's nothing at index zero. So because the test says that we expect it to return null, we need to go to our pop method and tell our pop method if the stack.count is less than one, then the stack is empty. So return null, which is what our test is expecting. If there's something in the stack, if the count is uh, one or greater, then we can go ahead and return the item from index zero after converting it to a string, of course. Now we should be able to run that test and see it pass because now our method returns null instead of throwing an exception. Let's move on to test number seven. In test number seven, we're going to do a push and a peek and make sure that the stack is not empty. So we're going to recycle this push pop check empty test. Let's copy that this time and paste it down here. But this time, instead of doing a pop, we're going to do a peek. So push peek. Check empty test is what we're going to call this one. And we're just going to change the push method to a peak method. But this time, we would expect that the is empty method returns false because the peak method should not clear the value off of the stack. Now, we can't run our test and see it fail until we generate enough code that the compiler can compile. Now we can run our test and see it fail because, as we've seen before, the method is not yet implemented, so the test is failing due to that exception. So let's go to our stack class, and we will implement our peak method by basically using the same code from our pop method with one minor change. And that change is we are not going to remove the item from the stack. We're just going to retrieve it and return it. And that should allow our push peak check empty test to pass. So our tests are passing now. All six of our six tests are passing. And now we'll do one more test. We're going to skip test number eight, the multi push peak test, because again, that would expose our secret logic error. So we're going to move on to test number nine, which is peaking at an empty stack. Now, the same way that we tried to pop from an empty stack and we expected that we would get null, when we peek from an empty stack, we are going to expect to get not null, but an exception. So when we peek at an empty stack, we don't need to do an assertion because this time, what we're checking for is not that a value is what we expected, but that we get an exception. So when you pop, we'll be nice and we'll return a null. But if you try to peek at an empty stack, oh, now you're crossing the line. Now we expect an exception. And the exception that we expect is going to be of the type system dot argument out of range exception because the value that we're trying to select does not exist because the stack is empty. And we don't have to do anything special to make this test pass because by default the stack throws an error if we don't tell it to return a null or some other graceful exit. So we should be able to run all of our tests now and see all of our tests pass. So that's the seven of the nine tests that we're going to create in this demo, we will find our logic error in the next demo where we use SpecFlow to automate acceptance tests. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next video.